forging cyber, forging cyber security. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV, and I am out here in Las Vegas covering Black Hat 2014. Right now, I'm at the IOASIS Lounge, which is hosted by IOActive. It's at the 38th floor of the Four Seasons Hotel here at Mandalay Bay, and I'm speaking with Cesar Cerudo. He is the CTO of IOActive Labs. How are you today, Cesar? Very good, and you? I'm doing great. This is a great place to be. It's been a great show so far. And you are actually here um, to speak at DEF CON in a few days. And your specialty, or what you're speaking about, is going to be traffic control systems. So tell us a little bit about traffic control systems, how they work in general. Well, basically, you know, uh, street lights or signals at uh, highways or ramp meters. Basically, in order to, impro uh, to improve the traffic, the traffic flow, they will use data from the traffic to synchronize better the intersections, the timing of the lights, etc. So they need data from some sensors. They could use, uh, for instance, video, you know, the same video that is used by surveillance. Sometimes it's used to detect the car, the traffic, and that data is fed to the traffic control system. And then you have other sensors, which are the ones that I researched, which are wireless sensors. Uh, I have one here, it's a small device. It's a wireless sensor. This go in the road, so it detects when the car go over it, and will send the data to traffic control system. So basically, when the traffic control system get the data, they analyze it, they process it, and we take decisions, actions, based on that data. So maybe at an intersection, if the system knows there is a lot of traffic in one direction, and in the other direction there isn't much traffic, right. they will adjust the, the timing of the green light to be uh, longer. Okay. For instance, it was 10 seconds, the green light, it will make it 20 seconds or more, because they know by the sensors that there is a lot of traffic, so in order to improve it, it will adjust the timing. And the same for run metering at freeways. When they detect there is a lot of traffic in the freeway, they will allow the cars to go slower into the freeway. But if in the freeway there isn't much traffic, they will allow the cars to go faster in the freeway. So all those decisions are based in the data that they get from these sensors. So basically what I researched is that these devices doesn't have almost any security at all, so they are wireless. All the data is being transmitted in clear text without any encryption. Also, they don't have any authentication. So if you know the protocol or if you have the specific devices, any, uh, you can access the, the sensors and change the configuration, change the firmware, do whatever you want. Um, these uh, devices are used worldwide, mostly on the US. Based from the vendor data, they say that they have 200,000 deployed worldwide. Most of them are in the US. For instance, on Washington DC, there are 100, uh, sorry, 1,200 uh, sensors installed in the capital of the country. Um, I was even there doing some uh, like uh, passive tests, like sniffing the wireless data, seeing if I was able to access the, the sensors, and it was possible. So all of these sensors that are currently installed around the world are hackable. So anyone knowing the protocol or having the the specific devices to access them, can do it. Right. So, and you don't need to provide any user or password. Um, it's, that's simple. Let me see this. Okay, so it's all controlled wirelessly, and these are under the ground to tell you know how many cars are going in which direction, and that ultimately controls the traffic lights. So theoretically, I guess if you, as a researcher or somebody with malicious intent, could access them, you could you could do what? Change the traffic lights? And yeah, you, you can do it directly, but you can influence the behavior of traffic light because the, the data is wireless and it's not secure, 
So you can, an attacker can send fake data. So the system will get fake data and take wrong decisions because the data is not real. So in that way, I'm indirectly, you can influence the traffic lights and the RAM meters, for instance, too. Um, I built, for instance, a, a proof of concept. I mean, it cost me maybe, uh, in total, $100. Mm -hmm. This is a programming board. This is a radio transceiver. You can program. So I, what I did was programming an, uh, an attack, a proof of concept, where I can send fake data to the system so they will take wrong decisions. We'll put wrong timing to the traffic light, to run meters. Um, it wasn't so difficult. I mean, you, you have to get, have some technical skills, but if you have the right skill, performing an attack becomes very easy. Um, you just need to invest maybe a hundred dollars or less in equipment, program it, and then you have the tool ready to launch an attack right. in many cities of the US. So it doesn't take much money, it doesn't take a ton of skill. Um, what are some of the um, suggestions you might have moving forward for traffic control systems to better secure their devices? Well, once it's like not relying only on just one detection mechanisms, like having more than one uh, mechanism for detecting traffic, also to not blindly, blindly trust the data because what these systems are doing is just getting the data and using it. So they should have a way to make sure that the data is really coming, in this case, from the sensors and not from an attacker. Um, also, the, the main, uh, what do you say, the, the main advice will be when someone has to purchase some devices and install it, before installing them, they should test it for security because in this case, these devices are used by a local government or city department of transportation of different cities. So basically right now they are purchasing the devices and installing it and starting to use. But in order to prove security before installing them, they should test the security and make sure that the devices they are going to use mostly on critical infrastructure are safe right. and cannot be easily hacked. Right. And has this ever been done to your knowledge? Has anyone maliciously gone in and, and hacked the traffic control systems to just kind of take control of? Of the roads. No, exactly exploiting uh, these vulnerabilities I found, but I, I, I hear like uh, it was maybe several years ago, five years ago. So uh, a couple of traffic engineers from I think it was Los Angeles. I think there was uh, a protest or some strike with the uh, traffic department. So basically, they had like. Uh, two or more interception. It was two or four interception in Los Angeles, but they were the main intersection on the city. And just by hacking those two or four intersections, they caused uh, a big chaos in the whole city. So there you can see that if you just uh, cause problem in the in a main intersection of a city, that can propagate over many blocks and can cause a lot of problems, like accidents, uh, of, of course, congestions, and different things. So, okay, if we take this device, and we point it at that light, that light, can you make that light turn red? Well, I wish that, <laughs> but luckily, I haven't seen these devices, uh, the vulnerability devices being used here. Uh -huh. um, and also, in order to do that, it, it won't be instant. It will be like launching an attack, waiting for some time un, until you can influence right. the traffic control system. And then the, oh, okay. the traffic light will be maybe acting weird, right. but it will take some time. It won't be instant. Do you have to be in close proximity to the light? Like, would you have to be sitting like right there to make something right, change? Because, uh, the information that is sent by the sensors goes to an access point, which has a distance of uh, a range of maybe, I, I don't remember in feet, but the longest is a thousand feet. 
but that is using the vendor devices. But in this case, I have uh, this device that I program myself, and it has an antenna, mm -hmm. so that can extend the range. So in line of sight, I tested it with a drone, and I flew the drone 650 feet uh, in the sky, and the attack uh, was working. So I can tell that in case the devices were down there, yes, it will, with this device, I will reach uh, to them. I mean, it will be in range. Interesting. Well, it's very enlightening to hear that any of this is even possible. It's not something people think about every day. So good luck with your presentation at DEF CON. Are you excited to present? Have you ever presented before? Yeah, I have presented several times, but in DEF CON just once. But anyways, every time is really exciting, and I, I'm just waiting for the day. You know, so yeah. It will be fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. Um, thank you to you. Wow, that view from the presidential suite was pretty sweet. We're always happy to spend time at IO Active's IOASIS. Make sure you don't miss anything we're shooting out here at Black Hat in Las Vegas this year. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, check out our Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.